Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back everybody for another YouTube video. Hopefully you've all had a fabulous Friday so far. This is going to be our daily cryptocurrency market update. Apologies for not making a video yesterday. I had an awful lot on personally. Um, also, really, I'm trying to position myself right now and get the trading right for the next three months in terms of where I want to be positioned, what I'm looking to short or what positions I'm looking to take. Uh, so really just took yesterday off to kind of um, focus on that. But we're back and we have got a lot to share with you in this video. We're going to be reiterating our overall view again, talking about liquidity, talking about a number of things going on at the moment. We're also going to be getting conspiratorial. One of the German ministers came out and essentially said that the 24th of September is going to be a day to remember. Wow, that rhymes. Um, so we are going to be diving into the world of conspiracy theories. You know, for me personally, I think that, and we've spoke about this, I'm kind of waiting for that Lehman's moment, waiting for that March 2020 event, waiting for that, you know, kind of free fall in 2008 or free fall in the 2000s after the dot com boom and subsequent bust. That is what I'm waiting for. That's one reason we're not positioned back into markets. Even if you take the kind of I don't want to call it catastrophic because we will survive it. Um, but if you take that kind of huge risk element out of things, even if you look at things fundamentally from an interest rate standpoint and a liquidity point, which is where we're going to start this video off, you know, it's still not a bright picture that would signal this as a generational bottom to be getting back into the crypto space. You will all know on this channel, if you've been following me from 44K, all the videos are still up. I've even got something pinned to my Twitter where we were calling this out. You know, you should all have been getting into cash and it's for this exact reason. And we are still sat in cash positions. If you want to find out what altcoins I'm accumulating um, and how we're trading, you can always join my Patreon. But we're still cash. You know, we are still heavy cash looking for those lower prices, looking for potentially that capitulation. It doesn't have to be any kind of capitulation. It could be a soft landing, quote unquote. I just don't happen to think that that's going to be the case. And I'm sure... Many of you don't either. There's too much going on. This was from the FedEx CEO says he expects the economy to enter a worldwide recession. Well, why a worldwide recession? When we've had recessions prior, they haven't been necessarily worldwide. 2008, you know, you had parts, Australia, for example, weren't massively affected. Um, also, many countries in, in the uh, continent of Asia weren't massively affected. But this is a world wide recession that potentially we're entering. We've spoke about the fact that we've been believing for a while now we're in a recession, but this is going to be a worldwide one. Why is that? Well, it's to do with the dollar. On Monday, ladies and gentlemen, my Patreon members have already got it. I'm releasing an interview that I did with Francis Hunt, the market sniper, and it is one to watch. We talk about the dollar poison pill. And that is something that I think everybody should get on board with. People think that finance is boring. Finance controls your life, whether you like it or not. So you better get smart and savvy to it. We're rambling on. It's just I didn't see you guys yesterday because I didn't make a video. So I kind of want to make up for it. Let's take a look at the overall market. The market's currently sat under a trillion dollars. So we saw a pretty steep slam down, certainly on Ethereum yesterday. This was obviously after the merge. I still think Ethereum has a long way to go now that the hype and the gravy train is now um, removed from it as the merge has happened. And there isn't really that much reason for people to buy. And you'll get the bulls that will go, Oh, well, what about the triple halvening, bro? Okay, well, what you're talking about there is supply. Markets are just supply and demand. It, uh, for those who haven't read the Dow Theory, it's well worth a, a read. It's kind of a boring book, I found, but it, it certainly puts in the sort of principles of markets as he saw it. Um, but essentially, they're talking about the supply there with the ETH merge. Well, the issue with the supply side is you're going to have freely available supply from the people who just bought over the past six months for this trade that will completely counteract the um, one third of the supply that is now being issued instead of what was happening when it was proof of work. Doesn't quite work like that. We are going to talk about the ETH merge because it's kind of coincidental that Ethereum have merged now. I think a serious attack is coming for Bitcoin over the winter and it's going to be energy driven because they're going to essentially say, look, people need to keep their, their heating on in, in, in the EU so we can't have you mining and stealing all that energy. Anyway, just a thought off topic. Um, this is really what we're looking at. Markets are driven from liquidity. It's all about liquidity. It's all about dollars. It's all about money and, and where it flows. This is all you need to know. And from a central bank point of view, they rig the whole game. When they turn the tap on, markets go up. When they turn the tap off, markets go down. It is that 
simple. Uh, and we've shown you this with the M1 money supply. Tell me that this isn't correlated. This is the money supply. These guys are the great pump and dumpers. But every time they do these pump and dumps, you guys, retail, get caught. And it's almost like a trap that is set there for them to get you to buy high. Then it will drop. You'll sell low. They'll buy low and do the opposite. And this is how they continue to sort of gain control um, over everything through finance. We are all financial slaves, ladies and gentlemen. That is the form of slavery that we are in um, in the century uh, that we're currently living through. It's a financial slavery. It's how they get people to continue to work. Just stop and think for a second. Do you want to go to work? Okay, probably not. Well, and by the way, I'm not an advocate for people not working. I think people should work, but I think it should be in the right way. I don't think they should be forced to, to sit behind a desk, you know, nine hours a day and, and, and you know, do something that they hate and spend their entire life doing it. It just doesn't, there's more to life than than that, guys. Um, but you do it because we're in this financial slavery. Anyway, well off topic. We, I still have to make that video. So this is the uh, US Reserve's net liquidity injection and S&P index. So look at the correlation here. We've also shown you this. Um, so this is from a sort of federal standpoint. This is from a, a, a central bank standpoint in terms of liquidity. Well, there's also liquidity in terms of retail liquidity. So, so money that people like me and you have that we can put into markets, we can take out of markets, vice versa. Retail sales growth sluggish in August as consumer fight to keep up with inflation. So retail is also getting killed. So you've got liquidity, you've got inflation, which is very negative and takes liquidity off the table because people need the liquidity to pay their bills and, and buy food and such. And then you've got liquidity taken off the table from the fact that the Fed just isn't printing anymore. Not only are they not printing, they're actually being regressive um, and, and moving into that restrictive territory. It's not a time to be calling bottoms for markets. Anybody that is, I believe, is completely ignorant to the situation. If, if this was the bottom for Bitcoin, it would be complete luck that that was the case. Um, and there'd have to be a serious event that would make it so. It's not completely out of the realms of possibility, but to just call this a bottom, like you had your bottom caller here, you had lots of them. There's a few in, in particular who I am 100% convinced don't know what they're talking about. Um, you know, now look, it's not safe to be calling bottoms here. And by the way, we were bullish up here. We were still bullish up here. So I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we made that pivot roundabout here and we've seen the subsequent downside that we've seen. I'm still calling for more of it. Um, we spoke about the FedEx CEO, uh, Argentina hikes interest rates by 550% basis points to 75% after inflation overshoots. So what they're trying to do is make their currency more attractive. It's irrelevant against the dollar because nobody wants it. And nobody's going to want it if the dollar is going to continue to gain strength over it. So it doesn't matter how much interest it's paying out, the dollar is going to kill that off. Um, again, look out for that interview that I'm I'm releasing on Monday evening with Francis Hunt, where we talk about all this. We talk about the dollar poison pill. And we talk about the explosions that are going off in these sort of developing nations in terms of their FX markets. We will dive into some technicals on Bitcoin. This is a, definitely a longer video, but obviously I didn't speak to you guys yesterday and I want to make up for that. Um, we'll get rid of the M1 here um, because what I want to actually talk about is is you know we spoke about this head and shoulders that is now looking very likely to play out and that's going to take bitcoin to around about 14k but let's get to conspiratorial for a moment so not that long ago the pope essentially imposed deadlines for vatican to transfer assets to banks so what he's calling for here is that they bring all of their assets inside the vatican okay and store it within their own vaults now the deadline of that is the end of this month so they'd have already moved to do that why are they doing that are they maybe suggesting or, or, or guessing that there's going to be some sort of an unruly event take place? What we spoke about at the start of the video, what I'm still waiting for, this Lehman's moment, this kind of, you know, issue that I think is going to arise. And here we have what is going on September the 4th, 24th, a day to remember, according to the German legislator who warns the world this past week. He essentially said... If anybody speaks German, you'll understand this. Dieser 24. September 2022 wird uns allen als ein Tag im Gedächtnis bleiben, von dem wir später einmal sagen werden. He's basically saying the 24th of September 2022 will be a day to remember in our memories as a day we will all say I remember exactly where I was. 
Why is he saying this? You know, there's also a number of other things that suggest this month, not to mention the FOMC meeting where they're going to up interest rates. Um, you know, and, and one reason we've seen markets sort of slide after the CPI print, they had, even though it was lower, it was marginal. And that's still, inflation is a beast that you now have to, you know, you can't just kill it with one man. You have to get a whole army and then you have to go and prepare that army and tactically kill it. And it becomes a way harder task at the stage that it's already at. Whereas if they had just squashed it early on, um, you know, it, it would have been a lot easier. But of course they didn't and they're going, oh, you know, who would have known that this that printing all that money, bringing M1 back up again would, would have caused this. Um, so, but we have spoke about the 30-day futures market for the Fed fund rate. Uh, let's talk about today. Let's do a little bit of technicals. Dollar has been stubborn, 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 stubborn. This has been wrecking FX traders, wrecking risk on asset traders. People have tried to long the hell out of this being a top for the dollar. I still see a period of dollar sort of rest, but maybe that's the rest. I don't know. Like maybe this continues a little bit higher and puts that pain on for a little bit longer until we have a bit more of a rest. So maybe there's still that further drop to come. It's very interesting. We've got the FTSE that is up today. Asian markets are down. There's lots going on internally with like China, for example, and lots of the other uh, Asian markets. Um, that is bad news. Um, even though they had some goodish news on the sort of inflation came out lower than, ex uh, lower than expected. Um, what else do we have? We've got the futures market, which is pretty darn red, um, to be honest. But that doesn't mean that the actual US Open isn't going to be red. Um, we have spoken about all of this stuff, by the way, guys, and actually pretty much nailed our calls on the FX market. You know, looking at this, um, this is essentially what we've been sort of going over. And and just to reiterate the fact that you got to remember, crypto's never had to go through a recessionary period, let alone a potential worldwide recession. You know, how's it going to fare? My my simple answer to that is don't be in an asset where the people are willing to sell to get liquidity, to get cash, to to make payments. That's going to be crypto largely, I think, considering its retail involvement. Um, what were we doing? We were looking at BTC demand index. We're going to release a whole series on indexes. Hopefully you guys find it interesting. If you cross over here, well, look at what happens every other time you've crossed over. You have seen a bit more of a uh, sell to the downside. Can give actually quite good buy and sell signals, certainly on the weekly. Um, taking a look on the weekly, you know, you have just crossed here. And don't see anybody talking about demand index. Okay, you can see what happens last whenever you cross it sort of prior. This was the last big one. Even here, you know, it's always led by sort of a further sell off, um, you know, going all the way back. But let, let's get into some technicals on the sort of short term. Daily, what were we looking at? Let's get rid of these squiggles. We were looking at this head and shoulders. Now, it was, it, it's not the most perfect head and shoulders, I'll be the first to admit it. Um, by head and shoulders, I don't mean what you wash your um, body and, and, and head with in the shower. I mean, a head and shoulders is in a technical target. Can we put that on log? Mm. Yeah, okay, we'll use log. This is what we're essentially looking at. This is what I think it's happening right now. Now, there still could be a, um, a second peak to happen on this right shoulder. The strength here had us worried about this right shoulder potentially forming because you typically want to see a week. So something like that would have been better before you get the slam. Um, you typically want to see a weak right shoulder, certainly a weaker right shoulder than your left right shoulder. But this has actually ran just slightly above, actually quite perfectly retraced all the way back into this um, where we first sort of started this range band environment. So this maybe was a big deviation. Now you're just back in the range. And you do have a number of support. So, so there is still the potential that, you know, Bitcoin maybe sees a bit of a push up. I do think eventually it falls though. So, so the head and shoulders pattern that we're essentially looking at and been looking at for a while now is this. This is what we're looking at, guys. Now that doesn't mean, just like over here, we don't get some sort of a double peak. But this is what you're looking at. You break this. Well, we've shown you targets for this a number of times now. And it, this will be rough, by the way. This is the head and shoulders rarely predict 100%, you know, on the dot where the price stops and, and, and sees a bit of a break. But looking likely, you're going to get a sub 14 Bitcoin, sub 15, sub 14 Bitcoin. If this plays out, 
Now, this kind of theory of this being a double bottom, which we also spoke about, and we said you need to get back to this neckline strong, and it was looking like it was maybe taken off here, um, has somewhat been uh, invalidated. So this is what we're looking at in the sort of short term. I can drop down the time frames for you quickly. It's a hardcore. You know, at the same time, though, the US market opens. Basically, as a crypto trader, you're just uh, a US equity trader at the moment. If you're this, this you could roll from. Maybe you do something, you come up here, you see something like that, that kind of action. But more probably, you bounce, you bounce, you roll. And then we see this further downside. And once you take, now that you've lost this 20K level, it's hugely psychological. And if you can stay below, it's going to be even more psychological. But once you come and you run these lows convincingly, you know, you can get convincingly past 17 and a half. You're opening up the floodgate. How many stop losses do you think are down here for people who didn't take profits up here? And given how the market's looking today, dollars beating its chest again, which is just amazing me, all your gold and everything selling off, oil, et cetera, et cetera, in this kind of deflationary spike that we're in, Asian markets down. You know, I think I think crypto is likely going to follow unless the US market opens positively um, and the futures market is somewhat predicting that that isn't going to be the case. So you could see this sort of free fall. Talking about the conspiratorial side of things, we still believe that this is to come. You know? We really do believe this is this is the period that we're in, and we've only really just started that and had the f uh, first or second kind of impulse. You're just following this, ladies and gentlemen, and we've been calling this for a long time now. It's not because I want to be bearish either. It's not because I'm making money being bearish either. It's because it's what I see, and I'm going to only ever tell you guys what I see happening. And if you look at, uh, and again, watch out for that interview that me and Francis did, you could essentially retrip to, to when you started actually adding the liquidity. This was totally caused by the Fed, this rally. You could be retripping. I wouldn't say round tripping. I don't think you're going to run down here, but you know, you're going to see certainly a, a bit more of a harsh um, fallback. So that's all we really got for you guys. Look, just liquidity moves markets. Nothing else. Fundamentals do, but you need the liquidity there to back the fundamentals up. Just like the ETH merge actually is bullish for Ethereum. And by the way, very well done to um, the ETH team for, for successfully execu executing that. I've been following Ethereum for years. I never thought we were going to get it at the rate we were going. But we have, and it's fantastic. It's here. Congratulations. Um, that's all I've got for you guys. I think I've rambled on and probably um, rustled enough feathers for long enough. If you've enjoyed the content, a like is always appreciated. So is a comment. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next YouTube video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you later.